today we're going to be talking about how to find maximum curvature of the function. And in this particular problem, we've been asked to find the point where the function has maximum curvature. Our function is y equals e to the x. Now, usually when we're talking about curvature, it's in relation to vector functions. And we're looking at k of t, where k is the curvature kappa. But in this particular problem, we just have a regular old function, not a vector function, but just a function y in terms of x. And when we're given a regular function y in terms of x, we can use this formula instead of k of t. We're using k of x. This is going to allow us to find curvature of a function in this form. So first, let's go ahead and call this function instead of y equals e to the x. Let's call it f of x equals e to the x. That way it'll match our formula. But as you can see in our formula, we're going to take the first derivative of f of x to get f prime of x. We're going to square that, add 1 to it, and then take that whole value and raise it to the 3 halves power. In our numerator, we're going to need to find the second derivative, and then we're going to take absolute value of the second derivative, and that'll be our numerator. So we're really just working from the inside out. We need to find each of these components and then plug them into our formula. So taking the first derivative of f of x to get f prime of x, of course the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, so that's going to be our first derivative. Our second derivative of x will be the same, we'll get e to the x because the derivative is still e to the x. And taking the absolute value of our second derivative, of course still just gives us e to the x because there's no negative involved here. If you know what the graph of e to the x looks like, it's all positive above the x-axis. So taking absolute value doesn't change that at all. We still just have e to the x. So now we have these components, we can go ahead and plug them into our curvature kappa function. So we'll get k of x is going to be equal to, here we have the absolute value of our second derivative, e to the x. So we put e to the x in our numerator. In the denominator, we're going to have quantity 1 plus, here we have the derivative f prime of x, so we're going to get f prime of x, which is e to the x, so e to the x, but then we're going to square that, then we're going to raise this whole thing to the 3 halves power. So when we simplify here, we need to simplify our denominator. e to the x and then squared is just going to give us e to the 2x, so we'll have e to the x over quantity 1 plus e to the 2x raised to the 3 halves. Now we can't really simplify any further, so we'll go ahead and leave this as our curvature function. Now when it comes to maximizing this function, we're going to follow the same kind of process that we use when it comes to maximizing a regular function instead of a curvature function. Remember all the way back to when we first learned derivatives and optimization, we would just take our function, we'd find its derivative, set that derivative equal to zero to find critical points, and then test those critical points to find maxima of the function. Well, we're going to do the same thing here. We've got a function for curvature, we're looking to maximize curvature, and so all we need to do is take the derivative of our curvature function, set it equal to zero, and find any critical points where this function might have a maxima. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to take the derivative. In order to take the derivative, we're going to need quotient rule. So I won't write quotient rule out, but we'll go through it here. We're going to say the derivative of curvature function is going to be, now remember for quotient rule, we take the derivative of the numerator first, the derivative of e to the x is still just e to the x, and we multiply that by the denominator without touching the denominator at all. So we say the denominator. Then we subtract, we leave the numerator as is this time, so we leave the numerator as is, and we take the derivative of the denominator. Taking the derivative of the denominator is going to require us to use chain rule. So to use chain rule, we'll bring this 3 halves out in front. This is like power rule here. We bring the 3 halves out in front like this, leaving the inside function completely alone. So 1 plus e to the 2x and subtract 1 from our exponent. 3 halves minus 1 is 1 half. So we get 1 half there. But then we just took the derivative of the outside function. We left this inside function, 1 plus e to the 2x, alone. But now we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Well, the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of e to the 2x is 2e to the 2x. So we need to multiply by 2e to the 2x. Now, going back to our quotient rule formula, remember we take the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, and then we divide this whole thing 
by the denominator squared. So when we square this whole denominator, and let's do it in a different color so we don't get confused later, but basically when we square that whole denominator, this two right here is gonna cancel with this two right here, and we're just left with one plus e to the two x cubed. So in our denominator, we get one plus e to the two x cubed like this. Now we need to simplify this derivative as much as possible before we set it equal to zero. So we're gonna say k prime of x is gonna be equal to, the first thing we wanna do is cancel out the twos over here. We have a two in the denominator and a two in the numerator of this whole term. So those are gonna cancel out. We're gonna bring the three out in front here. We have e to the x times e to the two x. When we multiply terms with like bases, we add the exponents together, so we get x plus 2x or 3x. So we're gonna have e to the x times one plus e to the 2x, all raised to the three halves, minus bringing the three out in front, combining the e to the x and the e to the 2x, we get e to the 3x multiplied by one plus e to the 2x raised to the one half power. And we have this whole thing here divided by quantity one plus e to the two x all cubed. Now let's go ahead and do some canceling here. So as you can see, we have this quantity one plus e to the two x in each of our terms, just raised to different exponents. So here we have to the one half, to the three halves, and cubed. So we're gonna cancel out one half from each term. So this one's gonna go away completely and become one. When we cancel out a one half from here, we're just gonna be left with one because it's like three halves minus one half gives us one. So this is gonna go away and just become one. And in our denominator, this is gonna go away and become five halves because we take three minus one half gives us two and a half or five halves. So there we go. So now what we can do is factor out an e to the x in the numerator. So we'll say k prime of x is gonna be e to the x multiplied by one plus e to the two x, so one plus e to the two x, and then we subtract three, subtract three e to the two x, so e to the two x like this, and in our denominator, we're just left with one plus e to the two x raised to the five halves power. Now we can do a little bit more simplification inside these brackets in the numerator, we get k prime of x is equal to e to the x. Here we have e to the 2x minus 3e to the 2x or negative 2e to the 2x. So 1 minus 2e to the 2x like this, all divided by quantity 1 plus e to the 2x raised to the 5 halves. Now we've simplified as much as possible, so what we wanna do is go ahead and set this equal to zero. We're gonna set this equal to zero, and we wanna find the points where this function is equal to zero because that's gonna give us the critical points of our curvature function. So setting this equal to zero means we're looking for the numerator to equal zero because if the numerator equals zero, then we get zero over something, which is gonna give us, of course, zero. If we set the denominator to equal to zero, it means the function's undefined, so we're really looking at points where the numerator is equal to zero. Well, the numerator is equal to zero if either e to the x equals zero or one minus two e to the two x is equal to zero because these are multiplied together. Well, we know that e to the x is never equal to zero, so we don't have to consider that one. Really, then, that means we're just looking at points where one minus two e to the two x is equal to zero. So we can go ahead and solve this now for x. We'll add 2e to the 2x to both sides and get 1 equals 2e to the 2x. Divide both sides by 2, e to the 2x equals 1 half. Take the natural log of both sides, so natural log of both sides like this, and that means the natural log and the e on the left-hand side will cancel. We'll get 2x is equal to natural log of 1 half and then divide both sides by two, we get x equals one half ln of one half. Now one thing we can do to simplify this critical point further is we have one half inside of our natural log function. Well, one over two is the same as two to the negative one. So x is equal to one half natural log of two to the negative one power 
like this because we could move this two back to the denominator and this negative one would become a positive one and we'd have one over two to the first or just one half. So that's how we brought it into the numerator by reversing that process. So two to the negative one. But when you have something like this inside of a natural log, you can bring the exponent here out in front and multiply it by the coefficient. So we take this negative one, multiply it by the one half in front, and we get x is equal to negative one half natural log of two. And this is just all about knowing your laws of logarithms, but this is our critical point, negative one half ln of two. Now, because we only found one critical point, because we only have this one critical point right here, we know that that's where the maximum curvature exists. If we want to prove that to ourselves, we can plug this value into the second derivative of k. So what we would do is we would take our curvature function. We already have the first derivative. We'd find the second derivative, again, using quotient rule. We'd need product rule as well. And then we could plug this value into the second derivative, show that the result was negative, and therefore prove that this critical point gives us back a maximum. So that's how you would prove it to yourself if you want to. But we know that this point represents the maxima, so what we're going to do is plug this value back into our original function to find the corresponding y value of the coordinate point so we can give a coordinate point where the function has maximum curvature. So we'll say y is equal to e raised to the x, where we found x to be negative 1 half natural log of 2. So we plug that in, and now we want to find a value for y. Well, the way we're going to do it, we talked about laws of logarithms earlier. We can take this coefficient, the negative 1 half, and make it an exponent on the 2. So we can say y is equal to e to the natural log of 2 raised to the negative 1 half power, like that. When we do that, we can see that we have e raised to the natural log of something. We'll get e and natural log to cancel with one another, and we just have y equals 2 to the negative 1 half power. Now, to make that exponent positive, we'll move this 2 to the denominator. We'll get y is equal to 1 over 2 to the 1 half power. See how that exponent becomes positive? Well, of course, raised to the 1 half power just means the square root, so we get y is equal to 1 over root 2. Now we know that the coordinate point at which maximum curvature exists for this function is the coordinate point negative 1 half natural log of 2 comma 1 over root 2. So that becomes our final answer, and if we wanted to find maximum curvature itself, like what is the actual curvature, at this point where the maximum curvature exists, we could just take this value for x and plug it into our curvature function. So we found the curvature function right here without the extra exponent here, the 2. But this was our curvature function, so if we just take this x value and plug it in, then we can find curvature at this point. But this is the coordinate point where maximum curvature occurs.